Hello mga kawawmat, in this video lesson, we will discuss about identifying the appropriate test statistic involving population proportion. There are a certain situation when the data to be analyzed involve population proportion or percentage. So the following are some of examples that shows this condition. A politician wants to know the percentage of his constituents who improve of his policy on educational programs and reforms. A manufacturing company is interested in determining the proportion of defective products in this assembly line. A set of randomly selected employees were asked to determine the percentage of their incomes spent on food per month. In a sample of 50 students, there are 15 part-timers. So this situation shows proportion. 50% of the restaurants in the sample generate more than a third of their weekly sales of juices. So that is some of the situation that involve population proportion or percentage. So the Z-test statistics for population proportion will be applied particularly when, uh, when the central limit theorem is to be used. Okay, for population proportion, so gagamitin natin yung formula for population proportion. It is the number of members in the population with a particular attribute over the number of members in the population. So to compute the population proportion, so gamitin natin ito. Yung formula na yan. So sometimes, uh, kung ano na yung pop hypothesized proportion natin sa problem, no? that is the population proportion na. And to compute the sample proportion, so in symbol, so binabasa natin as p hat, okay? So ito naman yung symbol na gagamitin natin for sample proportion, uh, read as p hat. So that is x, so yung x natin, that is the random variable for the number of uh, successes in, as in n sample, okay? And then yung n natin, that is the number of trials or the size of the samples. So we're using this formula to compute the sample proportion. Okay, in example number one, in Manila City, 12% of the residents are senior citizens. A survey was conducted to 650 randomly selected senior citizen residents to determine if they have cell phones. Out of 650 respondents, 428 answered that they own a cell phone. So first, the percentage of, so kitang kita natin yung 12% dyan, or the percenta, uh, percentage of the senior citizen residents represent the population proportion or percentage which makes uh, the population proportions equal to 12% or that is 0 0.12 kapag kinonvert natin in decimal. So to compute the sample percentage, so using the formula, so let first uh, write the given data. So ano yung mga given data natin? Our x is 428 and yung n natin is 650. So... 428, so substitute lang natin itong dalawa na to. 428 divide 650, the answer is 0 0.66 or 66%. So, ibig sabihin, yung sample proportion natin is 66% or 0 0.66. Next, for a class project, a grade 11 ABM students want to estimate the percentage of students in his school who are registered voters. From 48% grade 12 students, he surveyed 520 students and finds that 210 are reg registered voters. Determine the value of population proportion and compute for the sample proportion. Okay, first, since uh, nakalagay dito na 48%, that is the grade 12 students, so therefore the population proportion is 48% or that is 0 0.48. To compute the sample proportion, so our x here is 5, 210, so ito yon, and yung n natin is 520. So using the formula, so 210 divided by 520, meaning the sample proportion is 0 0.40 or that is 40%. So 
The population proportion is 48%. The sample proportion is 40%. Next, a survey of the pet owners in Green Village is taken and 40% of those surveys say they have dogs as their pet for protection for self or for family. A group of 180 pet owners are interviewed and 100 said that they have dogs for protection or for self and for family. So determine the value of pro population proportion and the sample proportion. So the population proportion is 40% or that is 0 0.40. To compute the sample proportion or the sample percentage, so your our x here is 100, so ito yon, And then uh, ang n natin is 180. So substitute all the given data. So formula natin, so 100 divided by 180, the answer is 0 0.56. Or the sample proportion or percentage is 56%. Next, so using the central limit theorem in testing population proportion, we have two assumptions no? uh, para makonsider natin na uh, this one ay gagamit tayo ng central limit theorem. So gagamit tayo niyan gamit yung dalawang assumption natin. So meron tayong dalawang assumption na gagamitin. Kailangan kasi para malaman natin kung talaga yung sample size is truly large enough. So, we can use the central limit theorem. So, ano yung dalawang assumption? So, the first assumption, the condition for binomial experiment are met. That is, there is a fixed number of independent trials with constant probabilities and each trial has two outcomes that we usually classify as success, denoted as P, and fa uh, failure denoted as Q. So the sum of P and Q is 1. Hence, we can write P plus Q is equal to 1 or Q is equal to 1 minus P. Okay, so tatandaan yung unang assumption natin, dapat meron lang dalawang outcomes no? that classifies as success and failure. Pangalawang assumption, the condition NP is greater than or equal to 5 and NQ is greater than or equal to 5. So, are both, kapag itong dalawa are both satisfied so that the binomial distribution of sample proportion can be approximated by a normal distribution with the population mean is equal to NP and the population standard deviation is equal to the square root of NPQ. So, dapat uh, nasatisfied itong dalawang assumption na to para masabi natin na talagang yung sample size is truly large enough para gamitin yung central limit theorem natin. Okay, so balikan natin yung pangalawang example natin kanina. So ito, for a class project, a grade 11 ABM students want to estimate the percentage of students in his school who are registered voters. So from 48% grade 12 students, he surveys 520 students and finds that 210 are registered voters. So, using this problem, yung example number 2 natin kanina, tingnan natin no, kung talaga yung uh, sample size niya is truly really large to use the central limit theorem. So, balikan natin yan. So, sa, for assumption number 1, it is evident that the responses have only two outcomes, the registered voter or that is the success or not registered voter or that is the failure. So, therefore, the first assumption is met. Pangalawa, to be able to satisfy the second condition, we find the hypothesized value of the population proportion where P is equal to 0 0.48 and while N is 520. To get Q, Q is equal to 1 minus P which makes 1 minus 0 0.48 so Q is equal to 0 0.52. So, kailangan mag-satisfied siya dito na yung NP natin saka NQ natin ay greater than or equal to 5. So, isa-isahin natin. So, first, substitute natin yung N natin and then yung P natin saka yung Q. So, our N is 520 times 0 0.48 greater than or equal to 5. And 520, so yung Q natin is 0 0.52. 520 times 0 0.52 is greater than or equal to 5. 520 times 0 0.48, that is 249.6, and that is greater than to 5. 
520 times 0.52, that is 270.4, and also greater than sub 5. Ibig sabihin, uh, since uh, we have shown that NP is greater than or equal to 5 and NQ is greater than or equal to 5, all conditions are met. So, so since all conditions are met, so where the sample size is really large enough to use the central limit theorem. So, tatandaan natin, kapag na-satisfied yung dalawang assumption natin at lalong-lalo na sa pangalawa, no? kailangan greater than or equal sa 5 yung NP natin sa ka-NQ para masabi natin na talagang yung uh, sample size nga is really large ina para gamitin natin yung central limit theorem. Okay, so kapag ganito, no, kapag na-satisfied natin yung dalawang assumption kanina, so, pag ganon, ang gagamitin natin, no, kapag ganon, in, in that condition, the test statistic to be used is the Z-test statistic. So, gamit yung form, formula na to. So, balikan lang natin yung formula natin kapag it involved population mean. So, di ba yung formula na ginagamit natin? The sample mean minus the uh, population mean divided by the population standard deviation over the square root of n. So, pinalitan lang natin yon Okay? Yung sample mean, pinalitan natin ng sample proportion minus yung population mean, pinalitan natin ng population proportion. And then, yung ano natin, yung standard deviation natin, pinalitan natin ng square root of PQ over N. Okay? Or, so yung Q natin kasi equal yan sa 1 minus P no pwede rin na the sample me uh, the sample proportion minus the population proportion divide by the square root of P minus 1 minus uh, this is 1 minus Q or 1 yeah since Q pala is equivalent sa 1 minus P over N okay so this is the Z test statistic so Basta maging familiarize lang kayo dito sa maging familiar kayo sa mga symbol na ginagamit natin. Okay? So, yung sample proportion naman natin, so makukuha natin yan, kagaya ng example 1, 2, and 3 natin kanina, by dividing your x over n. Okay? So, wala tayong problema sa formula. So, kapag ganun, kapag yung sample size is really large enough, so, pwede natin gamitin yung central limit theorem. At kapag ganyan, ang gagamitin nating test statistic is the Z-test. Okay, let's try this. Check whether the sample is sufficiently large enough to use the central limit theorem in normal approximation. A public information survey investigated whether the majority of 40% of adults supported a tax increase to help fund the local school ses, uh, system. Out of this, a random sample of 300 showed that 113 agreed with the tax increase. Okay. So, dito wala tayong maging problema dun sa unang assumption. So, i-check natin dun sa pangalawang assumption na kailangan yung NP sa NQ natin greater than or equal to 5. So, first, write the given data. So, ano yung mga given natin? Yung N natin is 300. The population proportion is 40%. So, therefore, pag kinuha natin yung Q, that is 1 minus P. So, 1 minus 0 0.40 is 0 0.60. So, i-check natin no, kung talagang uh, ito ay sufficiently large enough. Okay. Tingnan natin. Substitute lang natin yung given data natin. 300 times 0 0.40 greater than or equal to 5. That is 120. So, check. That 120 is greater than 5. So, dito naman, 300 times 0 0.60, that is 180, and 180 is greater than 5. Therefore, tama rin to. Since, uh, yung condition natin are, okay, so yung, dalawa, yung condition natin are, so therefore, the sample size is really large enough to use the central limit theorem. Ibig sabihin, sa problem na to, sufficiently large sample. Next, okay, professors from an organization from private colleges and universities reported that more than 6% of professors attended a national convention in the past year. To test this claim, a researcher surveyed 
80 professors and found that 5% uh, no, and that 5 attended a national convention in the past year. So, gamitin again natin yung pangalawang assumption. Okay? So, yung N natin is 80. Yung pro population proportion is 6%. So, ang 6% natin pag kinonvert in decimal, that is 0 0.06. So, that's why yung Q natin, 1 minus P, so 0 0.94. So, check natin kung 80 times 0 0.06, that is 4.8. And 4.8 is less than 5. So, dito pa lang, uh, hindi na tayo, hindi na sat nag-satisfied, no? Dapat yung NP natin greater than at equal sa 5. But, dito pa lang, less than na siya. Dito, tama tayo, no? Greater than, no? Yung NQ natin greater than sa 5. Pero yung NP natin less than siya sa 5. So, therefore, itong, pro, uh, itong problem natin na to is not sufficiently large sample. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your WOW Math channel.